Thank you, Justin. Hello, is this on? Yes. All right. Um, and thanks, Guy, for that setup. So, yes, fast is a small portion, but it's growing very, very rapidly. And also, as Guy said much, much earlier on, Canada is always a bright spot. So that's why so many of us from all over the world are here. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Christian Kurz, and I head up streaming research and insights for Paramount Global, which includes a whole bunch of brands. I actually have a slide on that, um, I think. Maybe I don't. Um, but that, of course, includes our free-to-air businesses from CBS to Telesa to Channel 5 and Network 10 in Australia, um, all the way through the cable companies, so Nickelodeon, MTV, Comedy Central, to our theatrical studio. Um, there's this other thing going on in Toronto uh, this week. It's called TIFF here. Um, and then lastly, of course, our streaming services, Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. I'm specifically talking about fast, free ad-supported streaming television and Pluto TV today. So that is largely what we're up here to do. Um, our president, Bob Backish, believes in research, and that's why we do a lot of that. Um, we truly try to understand what consumer needs are and then use that to inform our overall strategy and our brands and our content and our products and our various other things. And in order to do that, we set off to do one big piece of research around fast specifically. We really wanted to, under, um, to understand and address what, how, why people go to different, not only types of content, but to different platforms to watch that content. And that very quickly led us to need states research, which we did, um, and we did that in a number of ways in a number of places. What I'm presenting here today is the latest version of that, which we cover nine, I think that's nine, no, it's ten countries, um, and including Canada, of course. Um, and what we did is, yes, we talked to 5,000 people, but really what we did is we talked to them about individual viewing occasions. So we essentially made them keep a diary of how do you feel, what are you intending to do, who are you with, what room are you in, what are you watching, on what platform, and how do you feel afterwards, and a whole bunch of other things. And that led us to over 12,000 viewing occasions that we can then analyze and look through various different lenses. We also then went back to a number of them and interviewed them in a qualitative way, and that is why there's a video in here that you hear people talk to you directly rather than just listening to me. Um, but back to the need states, starting with, there's a lot of different reasons why people turn to television. And when I say television, I mean the big sense of television. So anything that you could possibly construe as professionally produced, long-ish form content. So that includes streaming, that includes linear, that includes everything else and in between. Um, and of course, that also includes fast. Um, looking at these various need states, essentially, there are eight rolled up need states that are coming together. There's comfort, which is about me time and to be stressed, and um, oftentimes that is familiar content that you're gravitating to for that. There is uplift, which is all about I want to feel refreshed, I want to feel revitalized, um, and I want to brighten my mood, consciously or unconsciously. There's immersion. This is the sort of content where you want to climb into the screen and really be part of that. That's where a lot of the high production value and high cost drama type things live. Then there's external connection, and there's really two sides to that. On the one hand, that is actual stuff that's happening out in the world, so news and sports type things. But then also external connection is just wanting to feel like I'm experiencing something at the same time as a bunch of other people. That is where a lot of shiny floor entertainment shows and a lot of reality shows live that have voting elements and things like that. Then we have routine. Now, we all grew up in a world where television was a routine, and for some people that means at whatever time at night I sit down to watch the evening news and then da-da-da, or the first thing I do in the morning is switch on to do whatever. So routine is a very important need state here. Exploration is challenging me. Um, I want to explore something. I want to do something slightly different. Um, togetherness is where what is on the screen is secondary to who is in front of the screen with me. So this is really about me and the people with me watching whatever that is. And then lastly, we have distraction, where very often that's a palate cleanser, or that's the half hour before you go to sleep. Um, or that is while you're cooking, cleaning, or at the gym. Um, so all of those things fall into that distraction mode. Now, we sized all of these need states, and we sized them in, in terms of number of occasions. We did not look at the length of an occasion at this particular case. Um, and I'm just realizing I have a Spain deck on here. 
That should be Canada, but you'll see Canada on the next slide. Um, so the number of occasions, these um, need states are sorted by prevalence. So comfort, uplift, immersion, and external connections are the top four. And the top three of comfort, uplift, and immersion are the most relevant and most prominent in all of the countries that we looked at. Um, it doesn't really matter but, um, what the order of those three is. It's just there's the prominence is there. Now, just because comfort is the most prominent doesn't mean that it is more important than distract. Because when I'm looking for distraction, that is the most important thing right now to me. So really, it's almost more important because there's likely going to be fewer offers and opportunities um, to address that. So both of them are very, very important. Not only are the top three the same across countries, they're also the same across age groups. So we're really, really seeing a consistent need for various things. And then diving a little bit more deeply into, okay, so what is included in each of those things? Um, I've kind of gone through most of this already. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Um, and so far as content, very often includes variety, uh, sorry, comfort, very often includes variety type content, as well as, of course, stuff that's familiar. Um, and very often the comfort stuff is solo skewing. So it's me on my own because I want to have me time and distress. Um, and that's really what that is. Uplift, on the other hand, often happens with others. That can happen anywhere, and not surprisingly, that includes a lot of comedy shows and movies type things. Um, immersion, we talked about it. Not surprisingly, that does happen in the living room on the biggest screen, because that's where, or the biggest screen, that may not be the living room, but the biggest screen in the household, because that's where I really want to climb into it. External connection, I feel like I said all of that. Same thing for routine. Um, this is a soap that I forgot, are also very, very strongly featured in that. Um, and the others are kind of self explanatory here. So, we also looked, of course, at how these different need states are satisfied by different delivery platforms of television, including free ad supported streaming television. Um, and, of course, you guys all know what FAST is, but just in case, um, there's a bunch of articles out there, um, and if you haven't, by the way, looked at Pluto TV, please do. It is a different experience than many other television viewing experiences, so I would suggest you actually look at it. Um, for this study, we looked at a whole bunch of different services across all of these 9, 10 markets, um, and we really bucketed them in various different things. So, linear TV, for the purpose of this, we include both free-to-air and cable all in one bucket of linear TV. SBOT is a relatively self-explanatory term. Um, and then we divided FAST versus other free online streaming services, um, so essentially ABOT. Um, we divided them up for a reason, and we also divided them up within the services, right? So on Pluto TV, yes, we, are, we were first in FAST, and we are FAST first. That doesn't mean we don't also have VOD content. So we filtered that out and put that into the ABOT the thing. So, looking at all of this across the four delivery methods and the various need states, um, changing gear slightly here, what you're seeing up there is indices, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to compare it all. And obviously, the, an index, the closer it is to 100, the more average it is. If it's above, then it's, it's more so, and below is less so. Um, and anything that is less than 10 points, we don't really consider significant in this particular instance. So what we're seeing here is that all four of them, fast, SBOT, linear TV, as well as other free streaming services, are delivering relatively well against comfort for the consumer. Right? So, consciously or not, the consumer decides, oh, this is what I want to do, and sometimes they gravitate to one platform over the other. For comfort, they're all kind of there. If we fill this out for everywhere else, um, we see that uplift, external connection, explore, and distraction are the most important need states for fast services. So it is very uplifting. There's a lot of that type of thing in there. The external connection, that's a legacy of the linear nature of fast. Um, exploration is a lot of various different content pieces that are coming together. And then, of course, we have distraction as well. And this is a lot of that is also companion viewing. SBOT, on the other hand, is all about immersion and togetherness. Immersion because that is where the high production dramas are that you want to climb into the, the TV screen for. And togetherness is all about, well, it's on my schedule, it's on my time. I make, a, I don't know, a viewing Saturday night or whatever it is. Linear TV, external connection, that is what it does. It is called broadcasting, sending the same signal to multiple people. 
Um, and then secondarily, routine, because we all grew up with it, and we sit down at whatever time to do whatever it is. And then non-fast free able services are also good at external connection, because a lot of that is catch-up viewing to the linear TV. So the able services are really right now much more tied to the linear TV, while fast is a, is a different distribution methodology, and it's a different way of consuming content from a consumer perspective. With that, listen to the people themselves, um, and I'm seriously hoping this is the English language video now. Alexa, open Pluto. Free ad supported streaming television. Usually known as fast services, are addressing viewers' needs in a unique way, which is fueling their explosive growth and popularity. Viewers are hooked on fast services because whatever they need or whatever they're interested, they can always find great, high quality content that really delivers. Watching TV on streaming services is unique compared to any other platforms because there's better range of content. It's kid friendly or adult friendly. Oh, and for the TV, you can watch the diversification of the content. Fast service users appreciate them for being easy to navigate and, of course, for being free. Lo que tengo que pensar es que está a tu mano, que lo tienes gratuito, que es disponible, que lo puedes llevar a donde quieras. Fast service is delivered comfort and relaxation. I work home alone, so a lot of times at lunch I have a show that I'm watching during the week. Unlike many other services, fast service is still less overwhelming to viewers, making decisions about what to watch a low stress experience. Hay tanto para ver que si no hay uno no ve nada y se lo pasa nada más siguiendo el catálogo, pero con esto simplemente pones un canal, encuentras lo que está pasando y pues uno puede que te enganches porque es la experiencia de la televisión actual, ¿no? Más moderna y tal. Using fast services gives viewers a break from the day to day, a reward, an uplifting moment to reset and recharge themselves. It just kind of makes me feel really rewarded for all the hard work that put into it. Y quiero ver más de uno para empezar. Fast services allow viewers an easy opportunity to explore, learn, or experience something new. Fast service users welcome advertising as part of their viewing experience. The advertising is kind of shorter, sharp, punchy, less intrusive. Fast services offers users easy decisions about what to watch, a sense of uplift at the end of a long day and an opportunity to explore from the comfort of home, which is why more consumers each day are adding fast services to their TV portfolios. Oh, I say to say that, but not stream shows, but I'm generally glad that it's very deliberate about the TV, well, or the TV on TV, but I'm just a spot to be able to know how it gets you up to the TV. All right, you just heard from the audience and from consumers directly. And before I continue, a quick public service announcement. If Sonia is in the room, please make your way to the green room, as Justin is asking to tell you. Um, all right, so why does FAST play such a vital and unique role? There she is. <laughs> um, I'm the owner of the gray Camaro outside. Please, you know, you left the lights on. Um, all right. Why, does, why do fast services play such a unique role for users? You've heard some of that in here, and I'm going to rattle through some of these slides relatively quickly. But they give users a break, um, a reward, and a change to reset and recharge. Um, and I'm just realizing these are same numbers again. We do have a Canadian deck. We will happily provide that to many of you. Um, and also later today, um, the Chorus guys, who are our Agile's partner, and much more than that for uh, Pluto in Canada are talking about as well. So, throughout the day, fast services act as a companion to users. Um, Pluto like, uh, sorry, uh, fast users and Pluto users like fast services like a friend. It keeps me going, they're there. And we have some funny quotes like, well, when I'm cleaning my house, I like to watch something like Hoarders because at least my house doesn't look like that. Um, and it's stuff like that that we're hearing as we're talking to consumers. There's always something to watch on fast, no matter how the user is feeling. Um, so again, it is this emotional connection to uh, mindset and need states that's coming through here. And of course, you, users of fast services, and again, of Pluto specifically, are really, really amazed at 
both the quantity and the quality of content that's on these services available to them for free. Um, and we did a different piece of work around Pluto user in Canada, and one of the respondents were actually honestly asking, well, how, how is this free? How are they paying for this? Because not necessarily, ads are ads, they're always there. So they hadn't, that particular person hadn't quite made the connection that that's the ads are paying for this content and are paying for this. And a part of that is driven because the quality and quantity of the content is so great. Um, fast services can satisfy users' interests no matter how niche. Um, there's a lot of niche exploration type content that's happening here. We saw that in the new states. And of course, fast services feel very, very easy for people to use. Discovering content is very, very easy. Um, I describe Pluto TV as free and easy in three ways. It is easy because you go there and it just starts playing something. Um, it is easy because the navigation is very easy. And who thought that the EPG would have so much new life and more life in it? Um, it is an incredibly useful navigation tool. And then third, easy, is that the content itself is familiar and is easy and it's not particularly challenging. It is essentially the TV equivalent of easy listening radio. Um, so it really, all of that coming together works and fast requires zero effort to start watching. It's just there. So the combination of the linear nature and the on-demand nature work together incredibly well. And all together, um, that means there is nothing else like fast services. And for that very reason, this also presents an enormous opportunity for advertisers. Um, there is a trade-off, of course, and the trade-off of consumers watching ads is something that they're willing to do. They're absolutely open to seeing ads for that quality and content and for that easy, fast experience. They're willing to see ads of all categories. Now, of course, entertainment, tech, and that type of stuff, yes, of course. But even insurance ads are welcome on that uh, platform, and who wants to watch insurance ads? Um, so fast users, apologies to any insurance company. Um, fast users see ads as a real worthy trade-off, and of course, that means that there is an opportunity here as well. Fast users are much more likely at having enjoyed the last ad experience than all of the other platforms. They are um, claiming, this is all stated, right? that they like um, the ads are better quality than on other services and overall, and specifically so um, versus YouTube and social media, which is not this slide, but we have a slide like that as well. And of course, um, this is specifically demonstrated by us, by Pluto, um, and you see this going through that the ads on Pluto are seen as better than various other platforms. And as we all know, television works on both ends of the funnel, right? It works on the top end of the funnel with brand building and all those types of things, but television also works on the bottom end of the funnel. That is what direct response is. Um, and Pluto, or fast services overall, really come together um, as delivering against all of that. So that is it, uh, that is all I have for you today. So fast services are really there for consumers, consumers who have already discovered them, and yes, there's a lot of them who haven't are very much into it, and we believe that this is a very, very big and growing market and certainly a big opportunity for advertisers to take advantage of that um, with us and our partners. Thank you guys so much, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Christine.